Thank you for joining me on my YouTube channel. My name is Christiana Sagi. On this channel, I will be teaching about international law, and these teachings will be in the form of short weekly lecture series. Over time, I will be surfacing varied concepts of international law. When and where applicable, these concepts will be analyzed and brought to you as it relates to current trends in international law as they arise. At the end of this lecture, you will find the transcript of the lecture in the link below. Also, for current trend and analysis in international law, you can subscribe to my blog. All the details you will find in the comment section below. For the 21st lecture in this lecture series, we will be addressing the notion of the law of the sea. Because this is an expansive area of law, I will be touching on some general points to note in this area of international law. So let's dive in. When we say law of the sea, what does that mean? Law of the sea is a body of customs and treaties that govern maritime matters between sovereign states, such as navigational rights, water jurisdiction, and claims to sea minerals at all times, in peace and war. It defines the rights and obligations of sovereign states in the maritime environment to ensure peaceful relations as well as maintain order and productivity. Much of what we refer to as the law of the sea today developed out of customary international law. On the other hand, the customary international law in this area of international law developed following the agitation that resulted from the freedom of seas era in the 17th century. As time went on, the many benefits that the sea provide humanity, including natural resources, its environmental impact on climate regulation, and the many ways it contributes to the growth of economies of sovereign states, influenced the development of a codified system of law of the sea. The earliest successful attempts at codifying the norms of interstate maritime environment was recorded in the late 1950s to early 1960s under the auspices of the United Nations. These have brought about the Geneva Conventions on the Law of the Sea, namely the Geneva Convention on the Territorial Sea and the Contiguous Zone, CTS, the Convention on the High Sea, CHS, the Convention on Fishing and the Conservation of the Living Resources of the High Sea, CFCLR, the Convention on the Continental Shelf, CCS, and the Optional Protocol of Signature Concerning the Compulsory Settlement of Disputes, OPSD. These conventions entered into force between 1962 and 1966. Though brought about by intense negotiations, there was a lack of consensus on a number of salient issues, including the definition of terms such as innocent passage and continental shelf. Following the emerging and previously unsettled interests of states, subsequent negotiations led to the formation of the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea on Clause. The UNCLOS utilized the creation of zones to define and delimit the rights and obligations of sovereign states. These zones include the territorial sea, including special provisions on international straits, the contiguous zone, the exclusive economic zone, archipelagic waters, the continental shelf, the high seas, the international seabird area, and historic bays. 
Just to elaborate on some of these zones in terms of defining rights and obligations, for example, the territorial sea refers to an area of sea where a state has jurisdiction as it would on land. According to Article 3 of ON Clause, the territorial sea of a state shall not exceed 12 nautical miles from baselines, and the convention proceeds to define normal baseline in Article 5. The contiguous zone extends further than the territorial sea. It is an area of sea where a coastal state can exercise limited control required for the prevention and punishment of infringement of its customs, fiscal, immigration, or sanitary laws and regulations committed within its territory or territorial sea. The exclusive economic zone also extends beyond the territorial sea and is adjacent to it. Article 56 of ON Clause defines the rights and duties of coastal states in this zone. Here, sovereign states have particular rights in the establishment and use of artificial islands, installation and structures, marine scientific research, and the protection and preservation of the marine environment. So in our previous lesson, we addressed the obligation of Pacific settlement of disputes and stated that one of the ways disputes can be resolved is by judicial settlements. We mentioned that there exists a number of specialized tribunals under international law that address this issue. The International Tribunal for the Law of the Sea, ITLOS, is one of them. ITLOS is a permanent judicial body established by Article 287 of the UNCLOS. The ITLOS is comprised of 21 member judges and the scope of the authority of the tribunal can be gleaned from its constitutive instrument, which is the ITLOS statute. So I want to say thank you so very much for joining in. Remember to like, share, subscribe, leave your comments in the comment section below, and hit the notification bell so that you're notified when there's a new video. We would also like to connect with you on Facebook and Twitter. Let us know the content you'd like to see. Thank you.